What you see here is a subtractive synthesizer written in SuperCollider. SuperCollider is a client server system, therefore in order to generate sound I need to start the server. Okay, as you can see the server is now running uh, and um, I will be able to create sound uh, which I'm going to record, so I'm going to click here and start recording. By start recording uh, an audio file is going to be generated to every sound that a super collider um, has been created. So, uh, as you can see in line 6 to 19, uh, there's the actual synth definition um, of our synthesizer. It's called SuperSaw uh, for obvious reasons, because it's using a saw generator and the VCO consists of two oscillators actually. Um, the one is uh, detuned a little bit uh, with respect to the frequency. Then it contains of two envelope generators. One is controlling the volume and the other one is controlling the frequencies um, of the filter and the filter, uh, the VCF, um, is a low pass filter. So what we can see here, we have the standard um, elements of a subtractive synth that you find in very many machines. So just like the first code block, I'm pressing Ctrl Enter again and as you can see um, the code is evaluated. Um, here a synth dev is generated and now I can uh, create a version of the synth, an instance of the synth by simply saying synth super saw and I also can uh, set some uh, parameters. In this case I set the frequency to 110 Hertz. So let's start that. You may, may hear a little bit of it, but as you can see I can move the mouse and if I'm moving the mouse then you hear more sound. So in order to um, really understand what is happening I'm going to uh, open up the Frexcope which is showing us a live spectrogram of the frequencies uh, that are within the signal and as you can see if I'm going all the way to the left and only very low uh, frequencies are visible, not even hearable, and if I'm moving to the right you can see I'm opening up the filter and more and more frequencies, higher frequencies, um, are visible and also hearable. So uh, within the X uh, uh, direction I'm going to control the cutoff frequency um, of the low pass filter. By moving uh, the mouse up I'm also controlling the resonance and as you can see the filter is going into self oscillation and is creating uh, some frequencies uh, so um, it's a resonating um, low pass filter. Okay so this is the way I control, I dyna dynamically control the filter um, of a well simple synthesizer as it only generates one tone nevertheless it has all, the, all of the components. Eventually um, I can open up the filter and um, sending a gate signal and setting this gate signal to zero means that um, I'm going to I'm going to stop the synthesizer. So let's stop it, and you can see uh, and hear that it fades away. Okay, so far for the demo of the code, um, let's go on to the theoretical part. Now that we have had a look at the subtractive synth in Super Collider. Um, let's have a look at the system itself. Super Collider is a computer music system and it's relatively old. Actually, as you can see here in the Wikipedia um, article on Super Collider, um, it has been developed by James McCartney in 1996, therefore it's already 27 years old, uh, which is very old for a system, a uh, computer music system. Nevertheless, it's still um, uh, being worked on. As you can see, uh, the last stable release has been released five months ago. And uh, so what we get here is a very, very uh, sophisticated, very stable, very powerful computer music system. I can highly recommend uh, working with it. Okay, and as you've seen, the system consists of three parts. On the left side, we've got the editor uh, where you type in your code. On the right side, um, you see there's a help system, which is just a normal hypertext um, help system HTML. And um, it's very uh, um, helpful because um, once you type in some text here, you simply uh, place your cursor uh, on some of the words, let's say saw, and uh, simple, simply press Ctrl plus D, and uh, then the relevant page is going to be shown up. Uh, and this always includes examples. So 
um, you can learn as you go along. And down here is the output window. The output window um, basically just gives you feedback um, on the actions that you um, uh, um, start off uh, while working with the system. Okay. All right. So we've uh, implemented a uh, uh, subtractive synth. Let's have a look at what a subtractive synth actually is. So if you again look at Wikipedia articles for subtractive synthesis, you will find this kind of um, uh, diagram. And this is the basic architecture that very many subtractive synths follow. So basically, we've got three components, which we already have seen, the VCO, the VCF, and the VCA. The VCO is the oscillator, and its duty is to generate sound. The VCF um, is a filter, and uh, its, uh, its part in the architecture is to filter, to control the sound. So basically, here we've got a rich sound, and the filter is filtering da it down a little bit and shaping it. Um, therefore, it's subtracting um, um, of frequencies from the original um, signal and that's why it's called subtractive synthesis. Eventually um, uh, the sound is then shaped but uh, sound is also controlled uh, in with respect to uh, its um, um, ah, loudness, um, its amplitude. So and uh, the amplitude um, is controlled by the amplifier. Actually, it is usually not used as an amplifier in making sound louder, but rather as an attenuator uh, that it, it's controlling the sound and usually is making the sound softer, not louder, but softer. All right, these three components are um, set up in a row. So the signal from the oscillator goes into the filter and then uh, the filtered signal goes into the amplifier and eventually goes out uh, to be uh, um, heard on the speakers. So in order to uh, make the system more versatile, more, more productive, more, yeah, more shiny, kind of like this, uh, these uh, components uh, are uh, controllable from the outside. So parameters of the systems can be controlled and uh, as we have seen we've got an envelope generator 2 and an envelope generator 1. We use the envelope generator 2 to control the, uh, sh um, the shape of the um, loudness and the envelope generator 1 to control uh, the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter and its resonance. All right. Now, these envelope generators are very imp important part, take a p very important part within synthesis, and uh, there are a, c a number of different um, approaches to it. But a very common one is the so-called ADSR uh, envelope generator, as you can see here. It's a four-phase generator. You've got an attack phase, you've got a decay phase, you've got a sustain phase, and you've got a release phase. And uh, the attack time basically defines how fast. Um, the key, uh, the synthesizer is uh, reacting to a key stroke. Um, therefore, once the key is pressed, it goes up from zero to one. The decay phase is basically um, it's getting softer and softer and softer, uh, and uh, you simply say, okay, how long is it going to take until uh, it is re reaching the sustain phase? And the release phase um, basically is the phase once you've left and released the key and, uh, and it's going down back to zero. So A, D and R are times, usually uh, encoded in milliseconds, while the sustain is a level. And a level uh, by this means a loudness level and usually in unipolar signals, this is a unipolar signal, that is um, the um, values are in the range of zero to one. Um, so uh, we uh, define a sustain between zero and one. Here we approximately have 0 0.6. And as long as I hold the key, the sustain phase is going to run and run and run. And the loudness, uh, the ampli amplification, the amplitude of the uh, of the signal is going to be kept at 0 0.6 of the maximum value. Okay, that's the envelope generator and um, so it generates a, um, a signal, uh, a function over time uh, defined by one, two, three, four parameters. Okay, so let's try to conclude that. 
we s we've learned about oscillators and oscillators generate a continuous cyclic signal. Um, uh, this signal should be rich and it, sh it should contain harmonics and partials uh, uh, that can be shaped. The filters control the frequency of the signals. There are different types of filters, um, high pass, low pass, band pass, notch and so on. Um, if a filter is resonant and we've seen a resonant uh, low pass filter here, the filter emphasizes frequencies. Um, in our case, in the low pass filter, it emphasizes the cutoff frequency. Uh, envelope generators can be used to control these parameters um, of other modules. Okay, for some final thoughts. Super Collider is a powerful computer music system, but it needs some experience though, so it's not very simple um, to start with. Creating a simple subtractive synth in Super Collider is straightforward and really simple. But turning it into a versatile musical instrument requires some design and thinking. Okay, that's it for episode 01.